Hey guys, I wanted to do a video for a while now on how I manage my bookmarks and specifically how I go about syncing them between my phone and my computer. Now, if you guys have used other browsers other than something that you'd use on your computer, you've probably synchronized your bookmarks just using whatever's built in your browser. Now the trade-off with this is that it kind of forces you to use whatever browser you have on your computer on your phone. And if you know me, you probably know that I use Qt Browser, which doesn't really have an Android equivalent as well as I would prefer to just not have to rely on whatever browser I'm using to determine how I pick my bookmarks. Now there are a few tools out there that help you accomplish bookmark categorization and all that sort of stuff that's separated from your browser, but I haven't really found any of them to be particularly good or really cared about all the extra features that they have. The main thing that got me to look into different options was because I used Surf, um, the suckless browser, for probably about like six months, I'd guess. And uh, when I was doing that, they don't really have any way to manage bookmarks, and I still wanted to be able to access my bookmarks anywhere I was on my phone. So I came up with a way to handle this using a few different tools. One of them is a shell script. Another one is an uh, actual Android app called Termux, which allows you to use a Linux-like system or Unix-like system on your phone as well as using Git to actually manage version control. So if I add something on my phone, I can actually get that on my computer and same thing with going the other way around. So nice and give me an easy way to manage my bookmarks and it's fairly simple so I can always expand it and add more features if I need to. So before we go any further, I kind of want to explain how Termux actually works. So Termux basically allows you to have a Linux-like system on your Android phone and you can get a nice simple command line set up and you can move around throughout your command line and do a lot of other functionalities that you can't usually do on a lot of uh, other devices, which is where it comes into play because you can actually use the shell script that we'll be working on today on your phone. If you guys are interested in seeing more tools like this, learning more about the command line and other cool tricks you guys can do, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know if you guys are interested in more videos surrounding Termux and stuff that you can do with it. I have a lot of different tricks that I use to optimize how I use my phone. So let me know if you guys are interested in that sort of stuff. So just to give you a rise, a really quick example, here is pretty much the workflow that I'd have. So I'd be on my home screen and then I would basically expose these widgets that you can actually set with Termux. I would tell it to execute this program like I'm doing right here. And then once it executes that program, it will basically allow me to get a nice little list like I'm looking at right now. And then I can either type in or navigate to whatever bookmark I am interested in. And then when I select the bookmark, it will open it in whatever web browser I have set as my default on my phone. And just as a really simple example of how this works on my desktop, it's actually really simple. I just have a key binding that will bring up D menu, listing out all my bookmarks. And then I can say, for example, just go to Suckless, go to their Git repo and then it will open it up in whatever web browser I have set as my default. So really quickly, I just want to give you guys a quick introduction to how the actual shell program works. Um, some of this isn't actually relevant to the examples, so I'll put the actual source code in the description so you guys can look at it without any of the stuff that doesn't really matter for this tutorial. So the way that it works is I set launch to D menu. It checks and sees if I have a display. If I do have a display, in other words, if I am on my computer, just stick with D menu, otherwise it will use FCF. So in other words, if I'm on my phone, use FCF instead. And then this part can be ignored. And then here I'm basically saying, if I have a bookmarks file, then list out the bookmarks and allow me to search through them. If I don't have a bookmarks file, then just uh, give me a simple prompt. And then here I'm basically saying that if I select the default option, which is a duck, then go to duck.go. If I select anything that has HTTPS at the start, then it will actually take me to that bookmark. And then finally, if my bookmark doesn't exist, then just search that up on DuckDuckGo. This allows me that if I, for whatever reason I had a full URL, I could just copy paste that in there too. So pretty simple. And when we look at how this actually works on Termux, it'll make a lot more sense why I chose to use FCF. Uh, really quickly, something that I actually just changed is that now if there isn't a display, it will actually use xdg-open, um, which in Termux will actually do basically what I was saying before and open whatever browser or program is appropriate for whatever URL it is. Anyways, that's all I would change, so don't worry, everything else should be about the same. And the last thing I wanted to show off is just the actual format for my bookmarks file. So here I have just a URL, and then another thing that I can have is a URL with its information from its URL. Um, the main reason that I have this is actually this is how Cute browser used, makes its bookmarks. Uh, you could really implement it however you want. This is just how I have it set up. And so then when it actually finds the bookmark, 
it will only take this and put it into the URL bar. Pretty simple, but uh, it allows you to have a bit more um, explanation of what that bookmark leads to. Anyways guys, let's go and take a look at how this would work now setting it up on my phone. So when it comes to actually what you need to install on your phone, you're just gonna need to install two applications. You're gonna need to install Termux and the Termux widget. Um, you can get both of them from the Google Play Store. Uh, the Google Play Store will charge you money for the widget, but you could use Fdroid as well, which is an open source alternative to the Play Store, and it offers it for free. So either way, it's a good option. If you do use the Google Play Store, try to give them a good review if you enjoy the program, and maybe give them some feedback so they know what they can improve for the future. Anyways, so we're going to go ahead and install those two. So opening up Fdroid, now we've got all these options of what we could install. We're going to install Termux, and then let's just look for, oh, there it is, Termux, and I have it installed already. But you guys can go ahead and install that, and then uh, term. Uh, and Termux widget launch, I think is what I'm looking for. Yeah, Termux widget is what we are looking for. And then we can install that as well. And then once we have both of those installed, we'll continue to the next step. For those of you using the Play Store, uh, this is just where you can find Termux. And then the widget is just Termux widget, just like before. So you guys can go ahead and use either of those, uh, or you're going to need both of those installed. Make sure that if you do use the uh, F-Droid one that you do not use the Play Store one. Same goes the other way, they're not uh, compatible. So if you use the Termux widget uh, from the Play Store, you can't use the Termux from F-Droid as far as I know. All right, so now that we have Termux installed, we're gonna go ahead and open it. And then when you open it, well, you'll be prompted with all this information. And then we're gonna just go ahead and install some programs. Uh, Termux basically is just a really simple command line interface that's similar to what you'd get with Linux or BSD. And we're going to go ahead and install some programs. So the way that that works is we're just going to do pkg to install things. We're going to do pkg install. And we're going to install git. And we're also going to install fcf. And then it will go ahead and prompt you for a bit more information. I installed these just a few seconds ago to save us some time. And then next we're going to go ahead and actually get our script. So our script is held in its own git repository on GitHub, um, which I'll link to in the description. And then my bookmarks are held with my dot files, which are in a separate Git repository that I keep private, uh, just on the off chance that I accidentally put a password or something in plain text that I don't want other people to see. Um, but I will give you guys an example that I'll link down to in the description, and I'll show you guys what the settings look like. And this is just where I'm going to go ahead and get clone. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and get clone that, and it will get all of our scripts. And then I will get clone my dot files. All right, so I have cloned my dot files and I've also cloned my scripts. So now if I ls, I have my dots and scripts and then we're actually gonna make an extra directory. So make dir to create a directory and then we're gonna call it dot shortcuts. All right, and so now we've created dot shortcuts and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go ahead and cd into my dots and then in here I have all this stuff. We're just gonna go ahead and cp.config. I actually usually do this using a symlink, but just to keep things simple, I'm just gonna copy it, and then .config bookmarks, and then we're just gonna copy that to home for now, and then I'm just going to go ahead and, so now I'm back in my home directory, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and make dr config. This is just how I like to lay things out. And then I'm just gonna copy my bookmarks um, into dot config slash, and then we're just gonna call that bookmarks. All right, and so now we have our information. So now we have our config. So now if I do ls.config, we will see that I have my bookmarks in there. And so now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go ahead and get started setting up how we can actually access these bookmarks from our home screen. So we're gonna go ahead and copy from my scripts. Uh, and then I have a D menu section, which is actually where I keep this exact script, duck search, and then we're just gonna copy that into dot shortcuts, and then there we go. And so now if I ls dot shortcuts, we'll see that I have duck search in there. And we already have duck search executable, but just in case you didn't, you're gonna go into dot shortcuts, and then you're gonna do chmod plus x, Duck search, 
and then duck search is now executable. So now we're just going to cd back to our home directory and then ls and we don't need the extra copy of bookmarks but don't worry about it. Now the big thing is that we have uh, our bookmarks put in .config and we have our script put in the shortcuts directory or dot .shortcuts directory. So now we're all done with what we need to do actually in Termux. So we're going to go ahead and leave Termux. All right, so now we are back on our home screen and we're going to go ahead and set up our widget. So this is what the widget will end up looking like. So just to make things simple, I'm actually going to remove it and we're going to go ahead and re-add it. So it's going to depend on your launcher, but the way that I do it is I go to add widgets and then we are going to look for Termux widget right here and then it adds that and then I get this nice widget right here. I already have two widgets here. I've got my agenda and then I have Termux. And here you will see that we have Duck Search available. So now if I click on Duck Search, I'm gonna go, uh, we're just going to go ahead and do some git gist. And then it will offer to open it in whatever app is appropriate. So since this was on GitHub, it will actually open it as a GitHub application. And then say, for example, I click on it again, and I just went to uh, the Suckless website uh, like I was looking at before. So git Suckless, and I open that up, then it will open it in my web browser. And then I get access to all this. This is a bit small, but I'm sure you guys get the idea. Now, let's talk a bit more about how we can automate this. So the way that I go ahead and automate it is if I actually cd'd into dots, I actually can just run make. So I have a make file, so if I just list out, see that I've got all this stuff and I have a make file and I can do make uh, make and then init and that will oh I don't have make installed so you'll need to install make if you want to go this route all right and now that I've got make installed I can actually just do make init and it will put all of my dot files that I need where they need to be and then now if I updated them or something like that so I could do git pull and then that will update all my um, well, if I actually typed in all my information, it would get all my dot files, and then I can just do make init to update them in case I needed to. Um, since they're actually symlinks in the way that I have them set up, I actually don't even need to actually do make init again. Once it's initialized once, I don't need to do it again. If this confuses you guys, don't worry about it. You could easily just make a simple shell script that will copy these files over. Symlinks just make things a bit easier and cut out one of the steps. Hey guys, I hope you liked the video and I hope you got a lot out of it. Be sure to let me know in the comments and hit me up if you guys want to learn more about how Termux works in general. This might have been a bit of a rushed introduction, but I felt like since a lot of you guys are probably comfortable on the command line that you won't really need much of an introduction and I didn't want to patronize you guys. But if you do need more of an introduction, let me know. I'd be happy to do it. Happy to help you guys learn. Love the tool and I think it's a great project, so I feel like it's definitely worth looking into. Anyways guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope to see you next time. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you guys will be notified of my next video. And see you later.